Today, I'm talking about Catalyst Browse, a free media management program that offers a very powerful stabilization tool for newer Sony cameras. It also has a few other useful features. I'll be breaking down all the benefits of this software and going through all the settings you need to be aware of to optimize stabilization performance. If you've previously heard about Catalyst Browse, it was likely associated with the stabilization tool, which I think is its biggest selling point. But there are a few other useful things it has to offer which are worth knowing about. One of those useful things is actually being able to preview all the footage your camera shot. I'm using the A7S III and I've seen a lot of people, including myself, having an issue with reviewing some of the combinations of codecs and bit rates on Mac and PC. It looks like it's mostly associated with shooting 422 instead of 420, which accounts for a good chunk of the available options. The software itself is quite basic and easy to maneuver around. You can search through all the folders you have on your computer and pull up the one that has the footage you want to stabilize. It gives you a list view of all your clips with some of the identifying metadata along here, with much more detailed metadata along the sidebar. The data in here is another great feature that is quite detailed, with not too many other programs providing you with this much information regarding the camera settings you had at the time of shooting. You have the standard stuff like date, time, length, and frame size, but you also have the codec, color sampling and bit depth, frame count, the recorded frame rate and capture frame rate, which is different if you're shooting in S&Q, the shutter speed, which is very useful to know sometimes, if you had stabilization on in camera, and a lot of other useful data. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I've done quite a bit of tests and guides on the Sony a7S III. And having all this data recorded automatically made things so much easier for me because I didn't have to write them down when I was shooting. Continuing on, you can toggle between this browse list and a viewer window once you press a video. You can go back to the list view by pressing the browse button at the top left. The clips with this icon mean that they have gyro information recorded and they're able to be stabilized. I tested all the shooting options on the a7S III and it looks like all the three codecs, XAVC HS, S and SI work in all the bitrate options and frame rates with the exception of 120 frames per second as you can see with them not having a stabilization icon beside them. I also tried a bunch of different combinations in s and and absolutely none of them record gyro data it seems. You can either right click on the clip and pick stabilization or there's also a button at the bottom. This brings up a separate stabilization interface and it automatically crops in as much as the software thinks it needs to stabilize the footage. I have found that it crops in more than it really needs to and you can often salvage a little bit less of a crop while still getting a full stabilized video. This stabilization cropping factor depends on how smooth your camera movements were in the first place. The less erratic the footage is, the less information the software needs to cut off from the edges to stabilize. This specific one was set to an automatic crop of 85.8%, which is not bad, but I like to press on manual and play around with the ratio. If you press on the viewing window option here, you can either see the original and stabilized clip side by side, or just the process clip to get a better view. I like to go straight to 95% as a baseline because sometimes it's good enough. Depending on how 95 looks, I'll drop down a percent or two at a time. In this case, 95% still has quite a bit of shake, 93 is a little better, 91 is much better, and 90 seems to clean up perfectly. In this case, auto was pretty close. 85.8 and 90% don't look too different, but every little bit of frame that you can salvage is a plus. When you are cropping in, you are losing resolution and this is no longer 4K. At 50% crop, you have an equivalent of a 1080 clip. This is why it's important to shoot in 4K. It's better to have more resolution to work with and preserve video quality. Here is one example where the automatic crop was way too extreme. Auto was set to 44.9, but I found that 77% offers no additional stabilization while giving you a lot more of the frame to work with. Once you are satisfied with your crop and stabilization, press the export button at the top. I would for the most part keep the default options the same, leaving them as same as source, but there are a few exceptions. Depending on if you shoot HS, S, or SI, the same as export option will obviously be different. HS will automatically export as AVC, which ends up being quite a smaller file size. You can change this to the same format that S and SI export to, which is XAVCS, with the ability to also bump up the bitrate. The default for S is the lower bitrate, and SI defaults to the higher bitrate option. 
Something that's important to know though is once you complete this export, it will become 8-bit footage even if you record it in 10-bit. This can be seen when you look at the metadata for the exported clip and it also becomes apparent when you try to grade in your editor. You end up with some serious banding. The only other export format that seems to retain 10-bit during export is XAVC Intra and you can choose between 300 or 480 megabits per second. I've tried to test some of the other format options with some working and others not. XAVC-S and XAVC Intra are the ones I will be using depending on if I want 10-bit or 8-bit color. Okay, so now for the camera settings that you want to be aware of because the regular rules of recording video don't work so well with the stabilization tool. First, it doesn't like motion blur, so the 180 degree rule is out the window. This is how the final product looks when you keep it at the regular shutter speed. For 24 frames per second, I recommend 1 200th of a shutter and this is how it should look. That vibration should be gone. And for 60 frames per second, 1 500th of a shutter seems to work. And second, it also doesn't work well if you record with IBIS or active stabilization on. They counteract each other and you end up with something worse than if you just kept both off. If you want to see how Catalyst Browse looks compared to the in-camera active stabilization and IBIS on the A7S III, as well as how they compare to the stabilization offered in Final Cut Pro, I test a lot of these combinations in different scenarios with different focal lengths in my previous video linked here and down below. And although I would say Catalyst Browse is probably the best stabilization I've ever seen, there's still quite a few drawbacks. First, of course, is the high shutter speed. The footage will look a little bit off, and even if someone watching the video can't quite put their finger on it, they will know something is not quite the way it should be. I tried to combat this by applying motion blur in post. The effect I made following a motion tutorial seems to actually make it look a little bit better, but if we pause and look at the differences between a regular shutter clip and this, you can see one is not like the other. And the effect I made seems to have the motion blur going in the wrong direction. It travels in front of the swing of my arm instead of trailing behind. There are other plugins people have made that you can buy, including a free one from Pixel Film Studios. But when I downloaded it, the effect wasn't working properly, so I couldn't test it out. All in all, I would say adding some kind of post motion blur is better than nothing. Another limitation that also has to do with shutter speed is this won't work indoors with overhead lights. It creates banding that's pretty extreme. Instead of the normal oscillating banding you'd see at lower shutter speeds, the higher shutter speeds just create one thick dark line that moves slowly throughout the frame. I am not sure software that removes this banding would work very well, but I don't have the plugin so I haven't been able to try it out. Next negative is that you are cropping in on the footage and losing full resolution. Depending on how shaky the footage was and how far you had to crop in, the more resolution you will lose. At 50% you're at a 1080 clip. Another strange thing I noticed in lower light conditions and wide apertures is getting this exposure flicker that is quite obvious. I didn't see this happen though when I was shooting during the day with lots of light and a smaller aperture. And the last negative is the added time it takes to actually process the stabilization. You have to open this up separately and process each clip one by one. And depending on how fast your computer is or how long the footage is, the export can take quite a bit of time. There are two more main features of Catalyst Browse that I want to talk about and one of them is color grading. If you are already stabilizing through Catalyst Browse and you want to bring your footage back to something normal from log, it's super easy to throw an S-curve on, pick up the saturation, and you have a pretty decent image that could be used without further adjustment. This can also be a benefit if you want to export as XAVCS and keep file size down. You can bring 10-bit footage into Catalyst Browse and then grade it there and then export 8-bit without needing to color grade anymore. One thing I've noticed though for at least Final Cut Pro is that the saturation doesn't seem to match. It comes out a little flatter when bringing it into the editor, so you either have to oversaturate it in Catalyst Browse or add the saturation later. The last feature is the Repair Flash Bands option. This is supposed to remove the light bands that occur when a flash goes off in your video. I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong, but I wasn't able to get it to work for me but the feature is there and may work for you, or if it's broken, may be fixed in the future. So that pretty much sums up everything you need to know about Catalyst Browse. As I mentioned earlier, I made a comprehensive guide on stabilization on the Sony a7S III, which you can watch right here. I also have a ton of Sony a7S III tests and guides on my channel, which I'll link down below. If that's not something you're interested in, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this video the most. If you got any value out of this video, a quick like would be amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.